So we currently have a workbook with about 100 sheets in. Now that's, gr that's great if we wanted to duplicate the sheets and if we wanted uh, multiple copies of the same sheet. But what if we then wanted to make an adjustment uh, to those sheets? then we'd want to be able to delete the sheets as quickly as possible. It would be extremely onerous to have to select all the sheets and delete them manually. That's what we're going to look at doing in this video, just as we've looked at how to uh, harness the power of loops to create sheets. We're also going to look at how to exploit loops to delete sheets and to do it at the click of a button. So at the end of the last video, I asked you to record some code uh, for deleting sheets. So I hope you did that. Let's have a look at the code that I recorded. Just going to open up the Visual Basic Editor. And this is the code that um, Excel has given me. So as you can see, I've selected a sheet and then it's given me this line of code uh, for deleting the sheet. So we're going to tweak this code slightly, but again, it's a good example of how you can record code and then review it in the Visual Basic Editor and really get it working for you. Just going to make some slight adjustments here. So I don't need this line of code because I don't want to select this sheet every time I want to delete a sheet. So if you have a line of code saying select a sheet, which you probably have, it's uh, fair enough to just delete that. And that gives us um, this line of code, active window dot selected sheets dot delete. So uh, that's OK, but it's not quite what we want. And we can streamline this line of code a little bit and a better command really is to say something like active sheets uh, dot delete. Just say it on a few letters there, and this is a much more common command in Visual Basic. So we've taken the code, tweaked it, streamlined it, and now we're ready to run it again. So the active sheet is this dep one sheet. I'm going to run the code, and I would expect this dep one sheet uh, to disappear. So I'm getting this dialog box. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm just going to say delete sheet, and the dep one. 100 sheets has disappeared. I'm going to run that again. So I'd expect the depth 99 sheet to disappear this time. OK, the depth 99 sheet has disappeared. So the code appears to be working well, but we are getting this dialog box coming up. And uh, that's great in some situations. But in this situation where we're looking to loop through an action tens or hundreds of times, we really don't want to be clicking that button every time. So what can we do to stop that um, to stop that dialog box appearing? Well, we can use the application dot display alerts uh, command. And we're going to set that to false, and that just means it's telling Excel don't show the dialog boxes. Just choose the default option on the dialog boxes. In this case, the default option is to delete the sheet, so it means the dialog box won't come up and the sheet will be automatically deleted. If we've set display alerts to false, it's a good idea to set them to true, uh, to set them back to the default setting uh, at the end of the code. So this is looking good. So what would we expect to happen now? If we go back to the worksheet, we would expect the depth 198 sheet uh, to be deleted and we would expect the dialog box to not appear. So let's give that a go. OK, we didn't get a dialog box, which is good news and the DEP198 sheet has disappeared. So this appears to be working well. It's a good example of um, how to work with code effectively. I think you're just putting a little bit in, a new command, and then testing it and building it up step by step. So that's good, and we're able to delete a single sheet quickly, but we want to do a lot more than that because we've got hundreds of sheets in the workbook. I don't want to have to run this code every time I want to delete a sheet. So what are we going to do? Well, you've guessed it. We're going to try to put a loop in uh, to repeat the action uh, any number of times. We're going to have a look at a slightly different loop this time, though. In previous uh, videos, when we were duplicating the sheets, uh, we had a counter variable and then we were controlling how many times to run through that loop. And we'll just have a look at that in the Visual Basic Editor. Uh, the computer's just catching up with me here. Okay, module one. Yeah, it looks something like this. So, so this is a for next loop. And then um, here we've uh, declared a variable and we are controlling with this number how many times Excel goes through the loop. In this case, um, the way we set it up, Excel will go through the loop 100 times. So that's great, but 
Uh, there's other ways of doing it that are even more efficient that are going to they're going to save us time. And in this case, we're going to take advantage of one of Excel's directories. So a directory is just where Excel compiles information. And there's lot of there's lots of information that Excel is logging uh, that is not immediate that is not immediately visible to us as a user. And a good coding skill to learn is to be able to extract that information and to use it in your code and to use it to control loops. We're going to look at um, so a piece of information, let's go back to our, to our code here, uh, which is called um, active workbook dot sheets. So this is a directory of information about the sheets in the active workbook. Now Excel um, logs how many sheets there are and logs things like the names of the sheets and, and it allows us to reference them. So in the loop, rather than controlling, rather than controlling the loop and saying go through the loop X number of times, say 100 times, we're going to say go through this active, work, active workbook dot sheets directory and do something to each sheet. So it means that we don't have to specify the number. We don't have to specify how many times to go through the loop. We can just say to Excel, do something for each sheet in the workbook. So how would we go about um, building the code for that? Well, again, we do need a variable, uh, but rather than using an integer variable, which you're already familiar with, we're going to use um, a worksheet variable because we want to do something to each worksheet um, in the workbook. And then uh, the code we're going to use is for each, uh, which is slightly different to the code we've used last time where we just used for. But here we're saying for each sheet, and I'm going to use the variable that I've already declared as a worksheet variable, for each Chris sheet in active, work, in active workbook dot sheets. So that just means for every sheet in the workbook. So go through your sheets directory and do something to every sheet in the workbook. That's all we're saying there. So for each Chris sheet in active workbook dot sheet. So we've opened the loop. What do we need to do? If we open a loop, we always need to close it. And we can use the for next construct. And if we just put next Chris sheet down here. So repeating the variable name, Chris sheet at the top, Chris sheet at the bottom, opening the loop, closing the loop. So I think we're getting there now. And what we're looking for the code to do is to delete each sheet in the workbook. And if we run it now, I'm pretty sure that's what it, it would do. It would leave us with nothing in the workbook because we delete all of the sheets. So that's not quite right. Although it's a powerful macro, it would save us a lot of time. We're going to want to keep something in the workbook. So how can we do that? Well, we can introduce a condition or an if statement uh, into the code so that Excel only deletes sheets according to a certain condition so that we can control which sheets Excel deletes. To do that, we're going to note down the name of the sheet that we want to keep, and I'm going to keep the DEP1 sheets. And something like if Chris sheet dot name. So if the name of the sheet you're looking at in, in the directory, let's say does not equal uh, dep one so this is the Excel notation for does not equal then and then end if at the end I'm just going to indent this code to keep it looking tight uh, consistent going to make an improvement here because I only need to turn off the um, the display alerts uh, command once at the beginning and once at the end, I don't want to do that every time I go through the sheets. I don't want to do that every time I go through the loop. So I've just um, moved that code to the top there. Okay, and this looks pretty good. So what about this if statement here? So we're saying that if the name of the sheet does not equal dep one then do something. And in this case, we're saying if the name of the sheet you're looking at does not equal DEP1, then delete the sheet. I'm going to make another small improvement here that's probably just a technical thing, but I'm going to use the variable name that, we're, that, that, that we've already specified to keep it consistent throughout the code. 
So what are we expecting to happen? We're expecting Excel to loop through the sheets uh, quickly and to delete all of the sheets that do not, um, that are not DEP1. So in other words, we're expecting Excel to keep DEP1 and to delete the remaining sheets. So as always, uh, save the file, back it up, and then just run the code, uh, see what happens. Okay, so the code is running now. I can see that something has happened. I can see in the Visual Basic Editor, a lot of the worksheets has disappeared, so that's a good sign. If we go back to the workbook, as we can see, uh, those sheets have disappeared, but the sheet that I wanted to keep, uh, the sheet that I specified in the condition, in the if statement that I wanted to keep, is still there. So that seems to be, seems to be working well. Um, another way I could have kept that sheet would have been by using the index number of the sheet, which is often a much easier way to work with a worksheet, so the reference worksheet. So how does that work? Well, Rather than using the name of the sheet, uh, we can use the index property of the sheet. And the index is the order of the sheets in the workbook. So the first sheet in the workbook has an index uh, number of one. So if you change the order of sheets in the workbook, the index numbers will change. But the good thing about index numbers is you don't have to worry about the name of the sheet and spelling the name of the sheet uh, incorrectly in the code, which would mean it couldn't reference the sheet. So another useful technique to learn is using the index number. And uh, we can do the same thing and say, if the index number of the sheet does not equal one, then delete the sheet. That's what we've done here. So it's achieving the same effect, but in a different way by using the index number. And that's a, a useful technique to learn. So let's um, duplicate the sheets again. Um, I'm not gonna do it 100 times, just gonna reduce this loop to 10. Duplicate the sheets, and then let's try to delete them using the index number method, and let's see if it works. Okay, so I've got some additional sheets here. They're appearing in the Visual Basic Editor. Going to go to the delete sheets code, and then um, save the file, back it up. I'm not gonna do that on this video, but you should do it. Save it, back it up, and then just play the code. Let's see what happens. Okay, I can see that um, sheets have disappeared there in the Visual Basic Editor. And looking in the workbook, I can see that those sheets have disappeared as well. So that seems to be working well. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's just summarize what we've learned there. Again, we've looked at recording some code and then tweaking the code and incorporating a loop in order to make it work to get it doing a task really quickly, literally, as you saw at the click of a button. We've also encountered a slightly different loop, which is a for each loop that uses some information in an Excel directory. And in this case, we've asked Excel to loop through all of the sheets in the workbook and to do something to them. And in this case, we've asked Excel to delete the sheets. So that's a good example of exploiting information that Excel has um, as part of a loop. And it means that we don't have to specify how many times Excel would go through the loop, which is what we did uh, in, in the duplicate sheets uh, macro that we did first. So um, the for each loop is a really good um, technique uh, to learn. So that's the loops. And then uh, we've managed to get the loops working to delete the sheets. So in this series so far, uh, we've um, duplicated sheets and the, uh, using loops and with deleted sheets using loops. So they're both working well out of a click, at the click of a button. Well, what's next? Well, if we go back to our original task, we were looking to take information from a database and to manipulate each row of inf information onto a separate sheet. So next we're going to look at first naming the sheets we create and then position control. So what does that mean? That means creating, uh, taking data from a database and then moving it uh, to a certain position on a worksheet. And we're going to use the offset command uh, to do that. So we're getting into really powerful Excel techniques. See you in the next video.